Okay, the voice fans, we are here with the winner of season 17, Jake Hoot. Um, I'm Marcus James Dixon with Gold Derby, and Denton Davidson is here as well. We're going to ask you all kinds of burning questions. First of all, it was just 24 hours ago. What's going through your head right now? Like, has it actually like sunk in that sunk in that you are the winner of the voice? Absolutely not. No, uh, it's it's been a wild wild few hours i guess um you know nobody else is sending video right now somebody on there yes uh -huh. okay just it completely went black when I, okay i'm sorry i'm sorry uh -huh. um no uh yeah no it's been it's been wild I'm, I'm still trying to process you know even the the blinds and having a chair turn for me and uh much less making it to the finale and then getting a you know you know winning the thing like it's just it's been very overwhelming and so many people have reached out with love and support so i'm very grateful for it and you mentioned uh having the chair turn around for you obviously that was kelly um and you actually made history as the first person with a one chair turn to become the winner um there was chris blue did that when all the other teams were full so when that happened where did you and kelly talk about that being a history making moment and or were you even aware of it as the show was progressing um she had she had told me it when she walked up on stage um after they announced it you know of course i was kind of emotional and i had my family up there and everything and there were so many things going on but um she had mentioned it then and then we did a press conference after where, we, where she mentioned it as well and it just you know i'm I'm just grateful she turned for me. Um, you know, people have asked me what I feel like, you know, if, that nobody else turned. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I'm just grateful she turned for me and that she had enough faith in me to, you know, not only turn for me, but, you know, pass me through the battles and the knockouts and, you know, just kind of, um, you know, has helped me every step of the way. And so it's a crazy thing, um, you know, to be the, the only one chair turn is, is, is an incredible, you know, accomplishment. And I'm, I'm just very grateful that, people voted me through and made it possible. And the voice has been on for 17 seasons now. So I'm, I'm curious, what was it about now at this time in your life that you decided that you were going to try out and, and see what happened? Um, you know, I, somebody actually had, um, had reached out to me, uh, to come in and, and interview or interview into audition. And, um, I honestly thought it was fake. I, I wasn't really wanting to do it. Um, but I had, I had brought it up to some family members and some friends and, you know, everybody had the same answer of, you know, why not, why not just go ahead and do it. And I think if it had been even six months earlier, I wouldn't have done it because I was still going through, you know, after going through a divorce and then everything in life, you know, just kind of, um, you know, just trying to cope with that. Like, I don't think I would have done it at any other time. And so it was a perfect timing. Um, I went and gave it a shot in Nashville uh, still didn't believe it was real until they, you know, they asked me to fly out and do another round of auditions out here later on. Um, and every step of the way, you know, it's just been one thing after the next of, you know, completely exceeding my expectations and ex exceeding anything that I ever thought was possible. So very grateful. Um, and yeah, I mean, it was just perfect timing. Um, I'm sure everything just went fast um, as you were progressing through each round. Uh, but if you had time to sort of think back on everything, what would you attribute your success to or to talk to someone else that was good for next season? As far as like a performance you're asking? Yeah, I mean, what, what do you think uh, was the best decision that you and Kelly made together to sort of propel your success um, or what do you feel like made you, uh, successful on the show? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, um, you know, Kelly, Kelly has told me and she's told a lot of people that she knew from the blinds that I was going to be in the finale, um, and that I had a chance to win. I'm glad she did. Cause there was no way in the world I would have ever thought that, but, um, I don't know. She just kept, you know, equipping me with, you know, the right, you know, the right ways to look at songs and the right ways to approach songs. And, you know, in the battles I was with Steve Cannell and, and we sang a Willie Nelson song and we had both gone in there just wanting to create, you know, a beautiful uh, moment on stage. Um, and then with knockouts, you know, I got to sing cover me up by Jason Isbell. And I think that was the turning point for me 
um, because I was able to, you know, kind of slow everything down and, and show, you know, because I was able to pick that song for battles. We don't get to pick, but for knockouts, I picked it. And um, that was that was definitely a turning point for me. Um, but I think the thing that helped, you know, propel me was just the constant, you know, encouragement from Kelly, you know, to to believe in myself more and to be more confident on stage, because there was definitely some times that I was incredibly nervous up there. Um, but every step of the way, it just got better and better. And um, as we got to choose our songs more and more, you know, I was able to to kind of get in my pocket and sing those songs that really meant a lot to me. And, and so I think that there was a multitude of different things that helped, but definitely her encouragement was probably the biggest. And you were never in the bottom two or the bottom three, but did you have a save me song in mind in case that did happen that you would that you would you know pull out and try to get those instant save votes? Absolutely, my my uh, save me song was uh, my finale song, "Amazed" uh, by Lone Star. Oh, okay. I had been yeah, I had been rehearsing that song for weeks, and um, Kelly actually. A funny story is during one of the results nights, uh, like I went to hug Kelly, and she just talked to me for a while, and everybody was asking me, "What did y'all talk about? What was she telling you there?" Um, and literally what we talked, she told me, congratulations. She, she knew it, you know, um, to, uh, you know, keep, keep doing my thing. But then she goes, I heard your version of, you know, we need to start thinking about finale songs. And I heard your version of amazed is really good. Um, and so once it, you know, we kind of kept progressing and stuff, then it became apparent that I was going to need a, a finale song. And, you know, the idea came up, Hey, why don't we just do amazed? Because it's a, it's a beautiful song, powerful song. And I had already been, you know, practicing it and, and sung it well. And so we just kind of, you know, added a couple extra lines in there because our, your save songs are a little shorter. And so we had to add the rest of the song in there and, and arrange it. But, um, but yeah, I was I was lucky enough to have been already practicing that song. Mm -hmm. And they talk about being the most streamed. I think you're the most streamed artist almost every week. So clearly the, the fans were responding to all of the performances that you were doing but did you have a personal favorite performance that you uh performed it this season um i think as far as uh ones that were able to be streamed it was it was desperado um as far as solo performance like uh, cover me up during the knockouts before we started doing the studio versions cover me up was like i said my turning point and that was one of my all-time favorite performances um, and then Desperado was uh, there. There wasn't anything about that that I didn't like. I just loved every second of it from the, you know, getting it approved to the production of it to, you know, just everything about it. I loved. Um, and then, of course, it didn't count towards votes. But um, the duet that I got to sing with Kelly uh, Winter Song, um, you know, that was just that was just a special moment that that I really enjoyed. It's It's going to be one of my all time favorite things I've ever done. Um, not only getting to share the stage with her, but s share, you know, that kind of a song on stage that not a lot of people had heard, um, but a lot of people fell in love with. And so I'm very grateful for, for all those moments. But, yeah, those are definitely the highlights. Can you talk a little about the, the bonds and the friendships you had with some of the other contestants? Like on Team Kelly, there was Shane Q and Hello Sunday. And uh, is there anyone that you think you're going to just become lifelong friends with? I think for the most part, I mean, you know, we, we a lot of us may not stay in touch as much as we like to, but I think we're all kind of lifelong friends, especially in the top 48. Um, yeah, Shane Q, you know, we, we had our nicknames Big Comfy and Big Cozy. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're definitely staying in touch. And we talked about because he's from um, he's from Guam or his parents are his dad is anyway. And I guess they were. Uh, really serious about having you know him come out and do like a tour out there play some shows and so he invited me to come out whenever that happens but um alex guthrie he was an og kelly member and then he went to john um max boyle callie wilson cat hammock um hello sunday you know they were like they're, they're almost like my kids you know even though they're 14 <laughs> um but you know every single person along the way in this thing and honestly the 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 final four ricky rose and, and katie you couldn't ask for better people and you know there was so many more people that i feel like deserve to be up there rather than me but definitely those three right there definitely deserve to be there um and they deserve any kind of success that comes after this because they're not only incredible musicians and, and vocalists but as people that you couldn't ask for better people 
And at the finale, you got to perform with Little Big Town. Uh, so how long before that, no, but that's the act that you would be singing with. And did you even have time to prepare for that? Or how does that whole finale night get prepared? Yeah, so I found out, I think the day before, well, I found out two days before I, perform, uh, I performed with him who I was going to be singing with. Um, and then we actually, so I sang Monday night um, and did the three songs. And then while everybody went to press after Monday night show, I actually went and got changed out, <laughs> excuse me, and uh, met with Little Big Town that night for about 30 minutes. Um, we went over there, the nicest people in the world. Um, so easy to work with. I was just trying not to mess them up because I love their harmonies. And obviously they all know the song really well. Um, and so we, we just kind of, you know, went back and forth and got it to where we wanted it, went on stage and rehearsed it twice. Um, and then we did a, we did a dress rehearsal earlier Tuesday. And so I was able to rehearse it with them a few times. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, it was, it was kind of a quick turnaround, but I'm so thankful that I got to sing on stage with them. As a voice fan, I always love seeing when the former winners come back and, and act as mentors and perform uh, like Malin Jarman this season. Is that something that you're hoping to do? do you hope, are you hoping to come and kind of pay it forward and mentor the new crop of contestants in, in a season or two? Yeah, I, you know, I haven't even thought about that, but I feel like if they ask me to come back, you know, that's that's a dangerous thing to ask me to come and do, you know. <laughs> No, um, you know, she came out and she's, she's the sweetest person. Um, I, unfortunately I didn't get to meet her during blinds cause I guess she was there for blinds. Um, but, uh, just getting to talk with her a little bit and pick her brain. Um, and then of course I saw her just for like a brief, brief second after uh, the show last night. Um, and so she's super sweet and, you know, and if they, you know, I would be honored if they asked me to come back and, and be a part of anything. Um, it was definitely one of the greatest things I've done. Um, and so, you know, to be able to come back and, and see everybody and, and be a part and encourage anybody would be definitely a highlight. And I guess my last question for you would be, uh, what's next? Are you hitting the recording studio or are you just letting this sink in and trying to figure that out? Or what are your plans going forward? Um, I think, you know, first and foremost is, is just to uh, go back home and spend the holidays with family. Um, and just kind of take it, take it easy for a week or two. Um, I think everybody's kind of, you know, doing the same thing as far as, you know, Kelly and a couple other people that um, I'm hoping to work with. And so we're going to kind of reconvene probably early, early January and go from there. I've gotten, um, I do have an EP that, that I have completely done um, that I was waiting to release until I was off the show, did not think I was going to win. So um, mm -hmm. that changes things, but I've got all those songs. And so, you know, I may, you know, send them to Kelly and see what she thinks. Um, and, you know, just kind of go from there, but, you know, take it one step at a time, but going from working an eight to five job, you know, five days a week to now looking at possibly doing music full time, that's going to be a, a little bit of a life change and, a, and a, an adjustment, but I'm super excited to get to work and um, go ahead and start getting songs out there, writing with new people um, and going ahead and start recording. Well, Jake, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Is there any final words you'd like to tell all your Hooters out there that, that may be watching this? <laughs> yeah, to um, to all the Hooters and to all the, the people who support me that don't want to, you know, call themselves Hooters. Um, <laughs> I, it totally. um, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, this is, you know, I, I was just the guy up there singing songs. Y'all were the ones who were voting and streaming and spreading the word and everything else. And so, you know, this is more of your win than it is mine. You know, I was just um, glad to be part of the ride and very grateful to each and every one of you. Um, so thank you all so much.